There are 3,000 kilometers between the western and eastern Kazakhstan boundary and 1,500 kilometers between the southern and northern boundary. Mountains covered by eternal snow, arid deserts, mighty rivers and boundless steppes lie between them. All of this is bound by a great sacred power that is people's love of their homeland. Constantly operating the legend hunter's expedition has been to the far west and east of the country, traveled from the south to the north in order to convince themselves once again that there is nothing better than one's motherland. The Ili estuary is rightfully considered to be a secret pearl of Kazakhstan. This is the only estuary among the rivers of Central Asia, where the former biodiversity has been preserved in a rather stable state. If we look at the map, we will see that the Ili estuary looks like a giant triangle, with the base stretching 120 kilometers along the Balkha shore, and the altitude equals to 150 kilometers. Its apex is situated around the Aral Tube village, where the Ili river distributaries branch off. Every distributary in its turn divides into hundreds of channels, forming a spotted maze of lakes, rivers and islands. Muddy waters of the Ili filter out in the estuary lake systems, making the nearby soil fertile. The bench flat plain forests are called Tugais or Tugai jungles, and comparatively recently, the jungle lord, the Turanian tiger, had reigned here. Today, the legend hunters are going to cross the Ili estuary, visit its most secret corners, and listen to the old timers' stories about the estuary's past, its modern problems and prospects. They are going to move from the Karauziak village that is located on the Balha shore to the Aral Tube and Jelturanga villages by Qatar. That is the area where the last Turanian tiger was killed 80 years ago. Authentic tiger traces had been fixed for 10 more years. A world-class biologist, doctor of biological sciences Stegman, lived in the Jeltoranga village. He recorded tiger encounters in 1942 and 46. Apparently, the last tigers died of natural causes, but when they became extinct is unknown. Once upon a time, there was a rich by Balhash. He had a beautiful daughter, her name was Ili. And the daring Jigit Karatal lived in the neighborhood. He was good at everything. He was the fastest horseman, the most accurate bow shot, and the best Kazakhsha Kuryas wrestler. Karatal and Ili fell in love with each other. But the greedy Bai decided to give his beautiful daughter in marriage to an old rich man. So the lovers fled to the wild steppes, and the old father took chase after them. When he almost caught the fugitives and drew the bow aiming right at Karatal's heart, Ili started desperately begging the patron saint of lovers, Umai, to grant her dear immortality. And she heard the girl's plea. Ili and Karatal turned into rivers, eternally carrying life to the dwellers of the arid desert. But evil Balhash could not accept that the young people dared to subvert his calm will and asked Yurlik to turn him into a rough lake. Since then, the grey waves of the surge of Balhash divide the Karatal and Ili, but anyway, their waters mix in the lake's water area. In this legend, we may see our ancestors' primal intuitive understanding of water balance as a basis of arid ecosystem life. There are two versions of the Balhash toponym etymology. According to one of them, this name derives from a Turkic word Balkas that means swampy terrain covered by hummocks. According to the second version, it comes from a Kazakh word Balkitu, meaning metal melting. An important role of the sub Balhash in the ancient metallurgy development has been conferred by the Academician Margulans expeditions that discovered melting furnace of the Neolithic age. 
the sub Balhash has a special place in modern metallurgy either. In 1928, a copper porphyrific deposit Kanarat on the Balhash shore has been discovered. In a few years, a huge factory has been built, and it is still operating. The Balhash copper is recognized as the best in the world. Since ancient time, Kazakhs valued and worshipped the rivers that carried the precious moisture to the steppes and deserts. Cities and caravansarais have been built along the rivers. The cattle breeders had been driving their herds from the foothills to the Ili and Karatal floodplain to guys with little snow for the wintering. The heroes of the past violently fought for juicy pastures of the floodplains. Oleaster, Asiatic poplar, and various types of willows were used to build yurts and make utensils. On the border of the landscape zones that are sandy desert and aquatic ecosystem, the biological diversity flourished particularly amain. During natural disasters, juts and pestilence, wars, famine and social upheavals, the elite floodplain rich in fish and game saved people, gave them shelter and food. These days, the Ili estuary generously grants its resources to the people as before. Spart fishermen and ecotourists come here from all around the world. But the floodplain nature of the arid zone is particularly vulnerable. Hunting, fishing and recreational resources of the estuary are not limitless. If we use them sparingly and reasonably, they will serve our children and grandchildren for a long time. But if we use all the power that modern technology gives people, the estuary resources may exhaust in a few years. Protection of estuary nature is our duty, and the ones who use these resources professionally play the main role in this noble endeavor. The estuary nature resources users established the Estuary Preservation Social Fund and United Huntsman Service, provided it with modern equipment and bound them to strictly control whether the tourists observe the natural legislation. There are 15 fishing locations assigned to the users of natural resources, and they are obliged by law to protect these locations. The users of natural resources must keep conservation service, arm them, provide transport, boats, fuels and lubricants, uniform, and pay a wage. And the huntsman service, the conservation service, must maintain order on the river. Sport fishermen must buy vouchers, pay little money for the right to fish, and this money must go to the huntsman service upkeep. Under the fishing management agreement, our enterprise had to create a huntsman service. We created it in 2006. We mercilessly fight with poaching and are going to intensify the fight. There were cases of fishing rights gross violations before, but the number of such cases decreases year by year. There are still little troublemakers, but we are going to mercilessly fight with them either. The legend hunters, together with the Huntsman Service Maitan LLP, go on a raid from the Karauziak village. This fishing village was established in the 1930s. The Karauziak fishermen took the sea, that is how they call the Balhash here, on sailing boats. Many of them died in terrible gales. The fishermen sailed up the channels Oren and Wood Canoes for several days in order to net in the estuary rich in fish. In the 1940s, the first low-power engines came out, and the modern fishing boats are frequently equipped with very powerful engines that allow them to cross the largest freshwater body of Central Asia in a couple of hours. The Balhash stretched 600 kilometers from west to east, and its width is 90 kilometers. Commercial fishing provides livelihood to the coastal village dwellers. Historically, there were only six types of fish in the Ili Balhash Basin. 
Ili and Balhash Marinka, Balhash Birch, Spotted and One Color Gubach, and Balhash Minu. A legend says that in the second half of the 19th century, some merchant brought a barrel of the yarn of carp from the East Siku to breed them in his pond. Spring flood destroyed the merchant's fish business, but on the other hand, enriched the ichthyofauna with a new valuable type of fish. The carp liked the warm waters of the Balhash, rich in seaweed and benthos. They rapidly spawned and reached the fishery level. By the middle of the 20th century, 20 more types of fish have been naturalized. Among them are thorn sturgeon, bream, arrow barbel, pike perch, crucian carp, asp, catfish, and grass carp. In the beginning of the 21st century, the northern snakehead somehow spread in the Balhash basin. The spawn could have been brought by the birds, or it might have come down the Ili from the ponds located on China territory. In the 1960s, the professional fishermen caught up to 30,000 tons of fish a year. In the 1990s, the total fish catch decreased to 7,000 tons. In recent years, the tactics and strategy of fish resources usage is rapidly changing. People realize that the Ili estuary, besides economic, has a major aesthetic significance. Commercial fishing in the estuary has been replaced by sport fishery. One may catch not more than 10 kilograms of fish of various types per one voucher. Trophy fishing is also becoming popular, and the principle is caught, let go. Sport fishermen go to the estuary not to provide themselves with fish, but to enjoy the nature. The legend hunters visited the oldest fishing base of the south sub Balhash. Ewald Bloch has been fishing according to the environmentally friendly principle caught let go for 25 years. We try to inculcate in people such concept as caught let go. That is, fishermen must let go the fish they caught. Such concept exists in practice all over the world. At the beginning of our business, we explained the fishermen what the caught let go concept is. We told them that there are many people who come here to relax and pursue such an interesting hobby as sport fishing. And among those people basically were foreigners. Our fellow countrymen had no idea that one must pay for fishing and certain service. Reasonable usage of the fishing resources is possible only if they are heavily protected. United Huntsman Service of the Estuary Preservation Fund set regular huntsman posts on the estuary channels. We traveled from the very outfall of the Ely River to the beginning of the estuary. We are standing in front of the Aral to be a village. This is the place where the Ili River estuary begins, as the first Ili distributary, the Topar Channel, branches off one kilometer upstream from here. Earlier, there was a large Topar system, but now it has shallowed, degraded, and most of the Ili waters divides into two parts 24 kilometers downstream from here. One part flows through the Jidili channel, and another through the Aksirke channel, which further is called the Iir. We traveled by cutter and car from the beginning of the Ili estuary to its outfall in one day. Nesting and recreational sites of the water birds are concentrated here. That is why the Ili River estuary has been included into the list of wetlands of global importance. Having witnessed that the estuary is in safe hands, 
our constantly operating expedition sets off to a grand journey through the North Tianshan. <laughs>